All right guys, Matt here. I'm just gonna do a video on showing you how to make a vin smoked venison roast and then also uh, smoked ribs. So I'm gonna move you in closer here so you can see. And there we go. So we have uh, the ribs here. I'll open those first. There we go. So we'll open both of these and then we'll let them drain um, so they kind of dry out. Put a couple of paper towels in the bottom of this pan. And then we'll get the venison roast in there. So last night I put it in this bag with um, some soy sauce, brown sugar, salt, and pepper. It's just a marinade. So we'll take it out and we'll let this rest in there with the ribs. Just to get some of the liquid off of it and then we'll be back and I'm gonna pull the silver skin off of this these ribs and then we'll marinate or sorry we'll put the uh, rub on both of them and then we'll get them on the smoker okay so we're gonna go ahead and take like I said the silver skin off of the ribs um, I put on a pair of gloves here it just makes it easier um, so the silver skin covers the back side of the ribs, and if you've ever had really tough ribs, uh, that's usually the reason why, is because they let that, they let that silver skin on. And I'll show you why. Scoop this down so you can see, hopefully. So you usually can pull it up in one corner, you can see it, and it's the membrane on the inside of the ribs. And it's super, super tough. It helps to get it off if you use a paper towel because your hands, even with gloves on, get super slick. And sometimes it tears off in pieces, but just grab those individual pieces and give it a pull. Sometimes you're lucky like this and the majority of it comes off in one piece. And you can just go back and get these smaller pieces. And it does kind of go up under this uh, flap here. There we go. Got one more piece down here at the end. Pretty much set. I'm gonna just trim a little bit of this extra fat off. That way it doesn't just burn. And usually what I do is I cut this flap here 
on the back side of the spare ribs. Baby back ribs don't have it. This part is usually already cut off. But cut this off because it will burn. It'll be done. What? Well, it'll be done well before the rest of it. So we cook this separate. Then we just pull this off whenever it's done. All right. So let's get rid of this. And we'll get some paper towels, dry things off a bit. And the reason dry it off is that way the rub sticks to it a lot easier. See the back side of the ribs. Put this down, flip our venison roast over so that side can dry out a little. Put this down, put our ribs down this side so it can dry out just a little. this paper towels in the trash. All right. We'll dab this just a little bit more, make sure it's real dry, and then we'll get our rub on here. Okay. So I take my gloves off, get the rub together, and I'll be back with you. All right, so we'll get this seasoned up here. We'll move these out of the way. I'm gonna keep one hand clean, and then the other one I'll keep dirty. that back here for a second. There we go. And let's get these paper towels out of here. All right. So let's season up the venison roast first. We don't need to do a whole lot of seasoning of it because it already has some on it from the rub, um, but we'll go ahead and do it one more time. So you can do a whole bunch of different types of seasonings. You can do uh, wet rubs, you can do dry rubs. Um, I have one that I made up, but usually um, the simplest and easiest is this one I'll just show you today, which is uh, salt, pepper, paprika, and either chili pepper or crushed red pepper. I'm gonna do them in about equal amounts, except the red pepper or chili uh, powder you want to do to taste. All right. Paprika on here. Last one I'll do uh, before we put it on is brown sugar.
So we'll get the rub on the ribs here. And we'll just do one side totally at a time since you've seen how we do it once already. Lay the rib strip out here. Get it at the same time. Put all our salt on. And we'll get our pepper on. Paprika on. And I'm going to have to check and see if we have another thing of paprika. We're just about out. Forgot to check that before I got started. a little bit of crushed red pepper on here as well. All right, flip these over. Put pepper on here and just repeat the same process that we did before. And look at that paprika here, miraculously <laughs> refilled. <laughs> Last ingredient is we'll put some brown sugar on. Flip this over. Flip this one over, and we'll go ahead and bring our venison out at the same time. Let's set that right on top while we get this prepped.
And the brown sugar will do a couple things. It'll add sweetness to it, and it'll also help uh, get uh, some bark on it. It'll uh, kind of caramelize. I'm gonna set this down, kind of push brown sugar on. Do the same thing over here. And then we'll put some on the venison roast as well. <laughs> and I did leave both of these out of the fridge for maybe an hour or so. Um, that way the meat can warm up to room temperature. That way it uh, cooks a little bit more even and a little uh, quicker up to temperature on the smoker as well. All right, guys, so we're set. I'm just. They're not quite up to temperature. I'm going to get the meat on there anyway, though. So uh, it gets going. We're at a, a grill temp of 99, meat temp of 59. I put the uh, meat probe in the venison and the thickest part of it because um, the venison's going to be done before the. Uh, ribs are. So we're picking this up. Give you a quick picture. And I have a pan under here. I'm going to get the water in. Alright, so our venison is about done. Our grill temp is 246. Um, our venison temp is 131. Um, so I'm gonna take some brown sugar, put it on the venison again, just to help it caramelize a little more right before it's done. The venison you wanna pull off at about 135, and we'll pull that little strip of uh, rib meat off uh, around the same as well. Because it's done for sure. This will just kind of help caramelize and melt on venison. As it finishes up its last few degrees, I'm going to put a little bit more on the ribs as well. That way we don't have to open the smoker again uh, until the venison then is done. So we keep the temperature up. Close this up, give it just a little while longer. We're now at 160 for the temp and 133 for internal temp. Be back with you. Okay, so venison is done. Um, it's at 136, grill temp is 214. So we'll take the venison off, let it rest for about 20 minutes. I'm gonna take the temperature probe out of the venison. So I already started counting up without you. So <laughs> we cut the rib strip off and it's already good. So I'm just gonna try it again here. I'll cut this up in some strips. And 
some strips. And then let's get our venison out and we'll cut it up. I don't remember which way the grain goes, so we'll have to check it and see. I think we're going the right way. Yep, we are. Okay. There we go. So as you can see, it has a nice smoke ring, some bark, and it is still moist. So we'll try it here and see how it is, and then we'll finish cutting it up. That's good stuff. All right, so we'll get back with the ribs as soon as they're done. All right, guys. So it's been uh, three hours on the ribs. So we are going to close this up, take the ribs off, put them in the oven, and let them cook for about another two and a half hours. Uh, low and slow at about 225. And uh, I'm gonna wrap it up with foil first and we'll be back with you. Okay, so we put it in the pan, we put maybe a quarter inch of water in the bottom to keep it moist during the baking, put a little more brown sugar on top. We're gonna cover it up with aluminum foil, stick in the oven, 225 for about uh, two more hours, probably. All right, guys, so we had, uh, or we just took the ribs out of the oven. They've been in the oven for about three hours. At 225. We'll uncover this here and take a peek. So there's a couple of ways to know that they're done. Um, one is to check the temperature. The other is just after knowing how long you cook them each time. Uh, the other one is you can see the ribs are pulling back along the meat there. You know they're done. And then another way is literally just to uh, take a fork and kind of pull it. And you can see it pulls apart super easy. Um, so those are the easiest ways. So I'm going to move this off of the cutting board here. We'll take it out of the liquid and we'll cut it up. And I did have it uh, turned off the oven for about half an hour or two, so it's just been resting. Drain some of this juice. Right. So let's cut this up. It 
is just falling apart tender. Trying to find which way the bone goes in this. There we go. So the meat isn't tough here. What I'm doing is cutting across the ribs because I'm tired of trying to figure out which way the, the ribs go. So <laughs> the meat is uh, super tender though. All right, guys. So as always, if you would, please like, share, and subscribe. If you have any questions, just let me know. Thanks.